um, de este pensamiento perdona de este pensamiento antes y después um, y es bastante espiritual, aunque es verdad que hablamos de medicinas o de hierbas, pero es mu eh, hay mucho más detrás de Ayurveda que simplemente la, par la, la parte de salud um, y bienestar. ¿Sí? Okay, uh, so next slide. So before talking about Ayurveda and things, let's talk about things that are around us. Okay, let's talk about sun, moon, and air. Let's see, like, you consider Earth. Okay, our planet Earth, and we have sun, moon, and air around us. And this one, let's say the sun that transforms uh, many things uh, in the world, like in the Earth, in the ecosystem. So like uh, when, if you keep a mango, raw mango inside an iceberg, it is not going to transform into like ripened mango or sweet mango. It, it will stay as it is. If you put inside an iceberg, it stay, it will stay for a longer time, right? So you need sun and heat to transform that unripened mango to mango, and like ripened mango, and the moon that pulls the water, that, that pulls the things from the earth, or you have tides in the oceans from uh, the moon that generate things, and that pulls down the earth, right? The calmness that produced by the earth, uh, and the air that transform, that, that, that transport a lot many things around the world, like the seeds or the people or whatever it is, Like then we need some kind of energy or the push. So that's that's done by the air. So we can say that the earth is maintained by the three, these kind of uh, things, like basically like I can say like sun, moon, and this air. So um, yeah, you can talk about it. Okay. Um, pues dice, antes de hablar de Ayurveda es importante entender un poquito eh, cómo tra eh, el, la tierra, ¿no? Que los, de estos tres elementos, por ejemplo, el, la, el sol, la, la luna y el aire son muy importantes en el ecosistema. Por ejemplo, dice, si tú coges un mango y lo pones en, en hielo, um, ese mango no va a pasar su vida de estar... Uh, no, no va a madurar, ¿no? No va a cambiar su, su forma de estar primero sin madurar y, y, y madurar y después um, morirse, ¿no? O, o, o estropearse. Um, y para, para eso es importante el sol y, y calor para poder llegar a, a pasar esas eh, partes. Lo mismo con, con la luna. Necesitamos la luna para, um, para el, poder que, el poder que tiene la luna de... de, de atraer las cosas o el aire para mover las semillas um, de un sitio a otro para que podamos tener vegetación. Todas esas partes son importantes en el ecosistema. And you spoke about the air, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so here I say like sun is something that transforms the things around us from like unripened to ripen or like being to uh, like... Uh, you know, uh, to decay the things as well. Like when we keep something in the refrigerator, it's not going to decay very fast. Like you need heat to decay it or decompose it. So the sun is doing that. The moon that pulls up, so that gives the that generate the things, the growing, like the gravity pulls up the things so that grows. And the earth, like the air that transforms the things around. Like I think that you have spoken to it here, right? Hmm. Should I repeat? Yeah, if, if you ask for this, it's fine. And then let's talk about the earth as it is. Like earth is made up of, you know, we have oceans, we have water. It says like 70% of the earth is with the water. In this water, we have ocean, we have like, uh, like fresh water, we have lakes, we have river, we have ponds, and then we have, you know, like rocks, we have like mountains, we have glaciers, we have marshlands, we have deserts, we have, you know, all these forests. We have all this together to make it as Earth, right? Sí, eh, en la Tierra tenemos muchas uh, cosas que hacen que la Tierra sea Tierra, ¿no? Tenemos desierto, tenemos, uh, uh, um, tenemos campo, tenemos lagos, tenemos um, océanos, tenemos todo esto que al final hacen que sea un ecosistema. And then we have different kinds of uh, bio-waste, uh, or we can say like, uh, like byproduct bio-waste that produce in the ecosystem. And like, you know, the carbon dioxide, the oxygen that we produce or the nitrogen that is produced 
during each different different cycles that are happening around in the world. Después, so, sí. uh, yeah. Sorry. Después también hay, um, hay la parte que escrita o que elimina eh, los distintos seres vivos en, en el, la planeta, ¿no? Por ejemplo, las plantas pues sacan el, el, el dióxido de carbono o el nitrógeno que sale de otro, pero siempre hay algo um, que ellos llaman mala, ¿no? Que, que es la parte que, que el des, desgaste o eh, la parte que sale de algo. Yeah. So here, if we need a healthy ecosystem to live, or to make the best product from this earth, we need a balanced temperature from the sun, a, like, you know, a balanced function from the moon, a balanced from, function from the air. And so, and uh, if there is a balance, like the desert, we need desert. And when the desert is in a balance, if it is not, it should not be increased, the desert area should not be increased, the desert area should not be decreased. The forest should not be increased. The forest should not be decreased. The ocean, it should not be increased. The water amount, the water we have in the earth, like it should not be increased. It should not be decreased, right? So the marshy land or whatever, that the earth is formed with it, right? All this rock and all these glaciers. And it should be in it, its, its limit. It should not be decreased. It should not be excess. And the bio waste, the oxygen is a bio waste. The carbon dioxide is a bio waste. The nitrogen is a bio waste. And It should not be increased, it should not be decreasing, and it should be formed in the best way. Like if the sea, uh, the ocean, if the seawater is, if it's not in the proper, you know, the combination, it, it makes a bad ecosystem for the animal, the, the, the living beings inside. And if the sunlight, if it is very high, if it's, it's, again, it's not good. If the wind, if it's too much, or if it's a cyclone, we have different climate. And yeah. So it should be in a balance. I'm not saying it should be equal. It should be in a balance, all these things. So we have even the oxygen, it should not be very high. And it should be formed in O2 form. It should not be O3 or O1. It should be O2 as it is. That's also a bio waste. So from the plants and like from the ocean. So when all these things are all together in an optimal level and when it is in an equilibrium, I can say we have a healthy ecosystem. And that's good for the health of the whole world, all earth, you see. Like, if the earth should be sustained in the best way, everything, like even the rock, even the ocean, even the, like, bio waste, everything should be in an equilibrium. Okay, uh, dice que todo, uh, para que, para tener un ecosistema sano, es importante que todo sea en, esté en equilibrio. No, eso no significa que todo esté en el mismo, eh, que tengamos lo mismo o la misma cantidad de todo. Necesitamos um, que el océano sea, um, eh, eh, que esté en equilibrio, que tengamos, uh, eh, eh, X, uh, que tengamos sol X tiempo, que tengamos la luna X tiempo, que tengamos el aire X tiempo. No, nunca deberíamos tener mucho más de algo o, mu o mucho menos de algo. Todo debería estar en equilibrio para tener un ecosistema que funciona. ¿no? Eso no significa um, que, ten, eh, que, que de, todo tiene que estar igual o mucho de algo es bueno o mucho de, de, otro, de otra cosa es bueno. Tiene que estar eh, en equilibrio para que todo funcione en de, de una manera buena. Entonces, si eliminamos una cosa de este ecosistema, pues ya estamos rompiendo este ecosistema y las fuerzas de las naturalezas. Igual que el desperdimiento, ¿no? El, el oxígeno, pues lo necesitamos en, eh, en X cantidad. No necesitamos mucho más oxígeno. Si producimos, empezamos a producir mucho más oxígeno, no es que nos vaya a beneficiar, todo lo contrario, porque eh, se desequilibra el ecosistema y, y termina perjudicándonos. Next slide. So you, there is something called biological clock. There is a rhythm for life. So things are happening in a rhythm and that's happening according to the time. So something called, you know, like circadian rhythm, something like that. And there are different kinds of clock that's happening around. So we are living in that rhythm. If somebody is, something is going out of this rhythm, it's not good. Let's say same, something like biological clock, we have the whole season. If so, like, you know, summer is not coming, Uh, in the proper time, if the winter is not coming on the proper time, if the summer is getting too much or if the winter is getting too much, it's not good for the ecosystem, right? And same thing, 
we have in our like in the body like there are different kinds of uh fluctuations that are happening or it's not called fluctuation like uh things are going in a rhythm in like in our hormones and the chemicals that's being flushed in our body even like the heart is beating in a rhythm so there is a rhythm that's happening around inside us around us so yeah pues esto del reloj biológico que eh, tenemos todos um, también va, eh, tiene su ritmo, ¿no? Es importante pasar por todas las etapas para que todo, fun eh, que todo funcione, ¿no? Uh, por ejemplo, si tenemos mucho sol o mucho, um, mucho aire, pues no, eh, este ritmo del ecosistema eh, el ecosistema se queda imbalanceado, ¿no? Igual si tenemos mucho verano y poco invierno, pues eh, faltas o poca lluvia, pues falta, siempre hay problemas, ¿no? Eh, ¿no? No crecerían las plantas, etcétera, porque necesitas lluvia. Necesitamos todo en equilibrio para que todo funcione igual, con, y esto es igual con nuestro cuerpo biológico, ¿no? Que necesitamos que pase todas las etapas para estar en equilibrio. Next slide. So when things are happening in a rhythm, when everything in an equilibrium, we can say the ecosystem is very really best and we get the best outcome. And Ayurveda is in all the science. There are many different all this like uh, like uh, health science, all this uh, old health science around the world. So Ayurveda is one among that which understand about this rhythm and things that have happening at, like around us and also inside us. Um, igual que otras ciencias viejas, no, Ayurveda no es la única ciencia vieja, hay muchas ciencias um, viejas como Ayurveda, um, pero como ellas, eh, como todas las ciencias de, de hace eh, mucho tiempo, um, enfocaban mucho en el ecosistema y en entender el ritmo del mundo y alinearnos a ese ritmo, que es lo más importante. Yeah, so something like I would believe, like or in Indian culture, we believe that whatever happening around is also happening inside. So something like different kinds of energy that controls the earth, the things that uh, the earth is made up of different things, as it all like oceans and all these things, and again about different kinds of bio waste, that's also happening inside us. That's also we're really seeing what's happening inside us, and there are there's a rhythm or there's a time plan. Or like when to when the sun the sunrise and sunset the season comes and all so there is a rhythm for that that's also happening inside us so and Ayurveda has understand this and that's that's why and with the help of that uh, the the concept Ayurveda try to get the optimal function of the body for well being. Um. Dice que la ciencia en India creen que lo que está pasando a tu alrededor también está pasando dentro de ti. Um, y entonces Ayurveda intenta uh, entender lo que está pasando o adaptarnos al, a nuestro entorno para poder equilibrarnos dentro. So, uh, so Ayurveda here, we can see that Ayurveda has understood about all these kind of things. So you can go to the next slide. So Ayurveda has understood all this kind of thing. So they, they give some kind of guidelines to our life so we get the optimal function. So we can go with this, all these rhythms and energies. So Ayurveda talks about lifestyle modification by giving daily activities that should be done, the seasonal activities that should be done, and diet and diet things that should, we should have, and the wellness program that you, that you should go and like this stress program that you have to do a detox program that you have to do and therapeutics and like no treatments and therapeutics that uh, for the diseased people so we can have the optimal function of the body with this for the well-being pues eh cómo hace, cómo nos guía ayurveda pues a través de de varios programas que tiene determinado en estos textos, ¿no? Nos dice, tienen programas de detox, de, de bienestar, de cómo quitar, aliviarnos el estrés, qué actividades deberíamos hacer, rutinas diarias, ¿no? Que dinacharia o um, rutinas a, a, dependiendo de la estación, ¿no? Como el ritucharia, la dieta, um, hay varias cosas que tienen determinado en estos textos que determinan cómo o, o nos guían, nos dan una, una guía de cómo vivir nuestra vida saludablemente. 
Okay, you can go to the next slide. So Ayurveda also consider the relation of body and mind. So they consider body and mind as one, like body lives in mind and mind lives in body and stays or like it is there happening inside the body. Uh, <clears throat> so Ayurveda uh, focus on the importance of the mental health as well. So now we can see the 70 to 80 percent of the disease that are happening around is from the stress. It's all psychosomatic disorders. It's happening by stress and like stress is one among like six cause of death that's happening around the world and it's very important to understand about uh, you know mind function and what are things to be done for better mental health as well. Um, eh, Ayurveda cree que el cuerpo y el, la mente es uno, um, que el, el, la mente vive dentro del cuerpo y la, el cuerpo vive dentro de la mente um, y habla mucho de la salud mental y de hecho uh, dice que ahora mismo un sexto de las personas um, mueren por estrés um, y Ayurveda ha, ha hablado de esto um, en los textos durante siglos explicando cómo vivir una vida Um, para manejar ese equilibrio entre el cuerpo y la mente y el estrés y la salud mental y la salud física, digamos, ¿no? Okay. So I rather consider if you need, if you have a healthy mind, you have a healthy body. If you have a healthy body, you have a healthy mind. So you have to make a healthy body to have a healthy mind. You have to prepare a healthy mind to have a healthy body. And I rather gives a lot of advices and many therapeutic ways to achieve a healthy body and mind. Um, Ayurveda cree que si tienes un cuerpo sano, pues, eh, tienes que tener un cuerpo sano para tener una mente sana o una mente sana para tener un cuerpo sano. Uno No es posible conseguir uno sin el, sin el otro. Y así es como nos dan mucha, nos guían um, con, con sus textos y con sus uh, con en esos textos diciéndonos cómo podemos conseguir um, el equilibrio entre los dos, porque no es posible tener uno sin el otro. Go to the next slide. <clears throat> so here, uh, I hope you remember, like in the previous slides, we discussed about like you know sun, moon, air for earth, and like you know like different oceans or like or, like you know, deserts, uh, forests, everything by the, how the earth is formed, and I spoke about the bioways, all these kind of things. The so same way, I really consider bodies made of all, like three different things, basically doshas, dhatu, and mala. So dosha is something like the energy that pushes or transform or that pulls uh, or that does the functions inside the body. And dhatus are the tissues, something like, you know, I, I talked about like the body is made of uh, different tissues like muscle, bone, like the, these are the tissues that we have. The same way as I spoke about earth, like, you know, oceans and like, you know, we have water bodies, we have desert, we have sea or like forest, we have marshland, we have rock. The same way body is also made of different tissues. And then I spoke about, you know, earth, um, uh, that uh, the, there are different kinds of bio waste. So it is also important there. The waste is also very important. So the, uh, for body, there is also different kinds of bio waste produced. So we call it as mala. So basically, the, uh, as it told about earth, the body is also made of like doshas, dhatu, and mala, like the functional element, the energy that flows and push and pull, the the uh, the physical things that that by which the body is made, the tissues and the bio waste that being used for different purposes of the body. Um, pues igual que os explicó antes sobre la tierra y el ecosistema, ¿no? Que había el sol, la tierra, eh, el, las, el sol, la luna y el aire, um, pues eso en nuestro cuerpo también lo tenemos. Tenemos calor, tenemos eh, luna y tenemos aire, ¿no? Y eso es lo que llamamos el concepto de doshas. Seguramente habréis escuchado alguna vez um, los doshas, bata, pita, jafa, no sé si uh, os suena algo, pero eso es el concepto de, de dosha. Um, también os explicó antes eh, eh, con el tema de, de ecosistemas, um, que como teníamos el océano, tenemos um, lagos, tenemos um, desiertos, esos son, en nuestro cuerpo también lo tenemos y este, en, lo, en nuestro cuerpo se llaman tejidos, ¿no? Los tejidos que tenemos o las, los distintos tejidos corporales que tenemos. Um, y esto en Ayurveda lo llaman como datus, ¿no? Que son los distintos tejidos um, que tenemos en nuestro cuerpo. También hablo de lo, del desplazamiento 
desperdicimiento ¿no? que tienen, um, por ejemplo, las plantas que dan uh, uh, dióxido de carbono, etcétera, pues también um, en nuestro cuerpo pues tenemos esto que lo llaman en Ayurveda mala, ¿no? que es todo lo que el cuerpo elimina o, o, o quita del, del cuerpo porque no, no es algo que, que necesitemos. Pues en la misma forma que el mundo es un ecosistema, pues nosotros también somos un ecosistema entre en nosotros. ¿no? Hay un ecosistema entre en nosotros que necesita el mismo equilibrio que necesita el, el mundo, digamos. Next slide. So let's talk a little bit of like what is this dosha, tatu, and mala. So first thing, as I told, for the earth, uh, to maintain like activities that's happening like for the earth, uh, we have sun, moon, and air. For body, we have something very similar that you know the the air that uh, try like transport the clouds, that transform the transport the seas or whatever. Uh, let's say that the, the air that transport transport uh, in the earth. Same way, we have something called water that, that transport things around in the, in, in the body, like to push out the stool, to push out the baby, to breathe, to you know, transport the nutrients or to send the signals. So uh, what are the potentials that's happening inside the body is considered as water. And mm -hmm. yeah, you can speak. Um, igual que dijo que el aire, ¿no? en, en el mundo el aire transporta la, las semillas, el aire es importante para que, eh, fluir y que transportar cosas y mover, la, mover cosas en, en el mundo. Pues lo mismo ten, lo tenemos en nuestro cuerpo, esto se llama vata. Vata es el aire o el, el movimiento que tenemos en nuestro cuerpo, ¿no? por ejemplo, um, el, el movimiento de expulsar un niño, el movimiento de absorber nutrientes, el movimiento del, del, del sangre por el cuerpo, es, todo esto es movimiento y esto lo llamamos vata. Okay. So as I told about uh, the sun that transform uh, the unripened mango to a riper mango and that helps to decompose the things that gives warmness to the earth, something like uh, that. We have, we have something like that in the body called pitta. Okay. Um, pues igual que comentó que la, el sol era tan importante para convertir al mango que... A, a mama, para madurar el mango um, tenemos algo en nuestro cuerpo también que nos ayuda a madurar o a hacer um, más ma a madurar a envejecer digamos y eso es pita okay, so we have many things we have different kinds the food that we eat that should be transformed to a diff like the micronutrients uh, it should be split into different different kinds of nutrients so the body can absorb it properly right So that's what actually the pitta that transform the things that's inside the body. Pues, And, eh, oh, the, the role of microbiome, the microbiome is also can be considered the hormones and enzymes. So these things can be, these are the things that help to transform. These are the signals that use to transform the things that's inside the body. So we can consider as pitta. Um, en nuestro cuerpo tenemos hormonas y tenemos, what is, hormones and you said? My... Microbes. The microorganisms, ah. the hormones, enzymes, microorganisms. And microorganisms como hormonas o um, en, 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 enzym, enzymes. Espera un segundo. Enzymes. Enzimas, like enzimas, enzimas, enzimas. Enzimas, enzimas. enzimas. Pues en, enzimas que tenemos en nuestro cuerpo um, a, nos ayudan a transformar, ¿no? Es, eh, son, son, eh, transforman eh, la comida, por ejemplo, eh, nutrientes, eh, la comida entre nutrientes, vitaminas, etcétera, las, las enzimas, por ejemplo, o las hormonas ayudan a transformar no, no sé, durante la pubertad, madurez, etcétera. Um, pues todo, todo eso, todas esas partes de nuestro cuerpo entrarían en pita, que es eh, la transformación, digamos. Ok, so something like moon, the moon that pulls the tides and that helps, like the pulling gravity is from the moon, so the, the plant grows. So something that generate, like that, that create is called as kapha. So something like moon, uh, the energy which is functioning like moon is called as kapha. So the, I can call it as like the proteins or are kapha. Um, la tierra que tiene como un pull, no, un push uh, que... Que... That generates, like, 
that helps for generating things. Que, que ayuda a generar cosas, ¿no? A, a dar movimiento o generar cosas. Pues eso sería CAFA. Yeah, something like I said, like proteins can be considered like protein is the building block of the body, so the protein is considered as CAFA, and like you know, mm -hmm. uh, we can correlate something like protein as CAFA, and like hormones, enzymes, and this microorganism as pitta, and the potential as WADA. Um. Entonces las proteínas sería kafa, um, cosas como hormonas, enzimas serían pita, and bata would be, sorry. The potential, the energy, the energy, the potential. La, la energía o la energía que tenemos um, sería bata. Okay, we'll go to next slide. So then I, I, I spoke about the earth is made up of uh, the rock, ocean, desert, all these kind of things, and Same way, our body is also made of uh, different tissues that's called as dhatu in Ayurveda. So there are basically seven types of dhatu. Ayurveda consider there are seven types of dhatu, like there's plasma protein, like, uh, and then there's blood, muscle, fat, bone, bone marrow, sperm, and all of them. These are considered as the dhatu or by which the body is made. The other ones are the energy that helps to function this dhatu. Got it? Um, see, sí, um, igual que Dijo lo de la tierra que tiene um, lagos, tiene océanos, tiene uh, todo. Pues en nuestro cuerpo uh, hablamos de los tejidos. Um, son siete tejidos. Es el, um, la proteína, la, la, uh, la, el tejido, digamos, más interior. Um, después es el, uh, la sangre, los músculos, la grasa, um, los, los huesos, el... Bone marrow is. Uh, espera un segundo. That's filled inside the bone. The things that's inside the bone. Yeah, but I don't remember. Uh, la médula ósea y después los uh, espermatozoides y los y el, y el... los óvulos. Óvulos. <laughs> Exactamente. El óvulo. You done? Yeah, so as I uh, spoke about, like, uh, speak, uh, before I told about, like, different bio waste around, like, in the earth, so which is, help, again, which is needed for a healthy ecosystem, like the carbon dioxide, the oxygen, the, the nitrogen, and many other things is also called as the bio waste. So same way in our body, we have different waste or byproduct, I can call this, it's not waste, It's a byproduct which is needed for the body. And Ayurveda considers that also. It is needed for an optimal function of the body. And they are also the functional part. They call this mala. And there are, again, three types of mala, major mala. That is stool, urine, and sweat. It's considered the major waste of our body or the byproduct of it. Pues Ayurveda igual um, dice que es importante tener um, la excreción, ¿no? Tener um, el desperdicio de nuestro cuerpo. No, no podemos tener... Eh, coger dentro sin, sin sacar um, y eso hay tres importantes que serían el pis, caca y el um, y sudar So, for a healthy ecosystem good earth, or let's say a healthy ecosystem, we need good function of sun, moon, air so we need, same way in the body good health, if we need a good health we need, a, uh, you know water, pitta, kapha, like the three doshas and yeah, you can say that Um, para, para tener un buen equilibrio necesitamos um, yeah. tener perdona 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 you said that for en, yeah, en for el cuerpo Yeah, the that we need all three of them is what you said, right? Yeah, like I was saying that uh, for, um, like we have an earth, like sun, moon, air that should be functioned properly, we have water, pitta, kapha inside the body. Igual que tenemos en el, en el mundo, tenemos la luna, el sol y, la, y el aire, pues en, en nuestro cuerpo tenemos vata, pitta, kapha y necesitamos un equilibrio de los tres para que funcionemos. Um, esto de que muchos dicen que yo soy pita o yo soy vata, no, no, necesitamos los tres para que, para que funcionemos, eh, estemos en equilibrio. Y como dije, como 
I, I, uh, I told about, uh, discussed about like Earth. We have this ocean, forest, like lakes, freshwater lake, and uh, the marshy lands, mountains, and glaciers. We have tattoos, like uh, you know, uh, the muscle, bone, bone marrow, uh, the blood, etc. The tattoo. So it it also should be in an equilibrium. It should not be in excess. It should not be. Uh, it should not be much lesser. Igual uh, que dijo antes sobre que todo tiene que estar en equilibrio um, en el ecosistema, pues lo mismo con los datos, ¿no? Eh, los, los tejidos. Necesitamos eh, que el, tanto nuestra sangre como el de la grasa, todo te, esté en equilibrio, ¿no? Tener demasiado de algo otra vez eh, llegará, lleva, nos llevará al desequilibrio. Yeah. Same as I uh, discussed about the bio waves, like carbon dioxide, oxygen and nitrogen, we have inside our body like stool, urine and sweat, it should be in equilibrium and it should be in a good quality, like oxygen should not be O3 or like O, it should be O2. So same way, our bio waste also should be in a good quality and good quantity, it should be in equilibrium, so we have good healthy body. Lo mismo es cierto para el, lo que desperdiciamos de nuestro cuerpo, ¿no? Que todo debería estar en una calidad buena, que no, eh, por ejemplo, um, no, no podemos tomar, eh, no podemos ingerir oxígeno. Oxígeno tiene que ser O2, no puede ser O o O3, tiene que ser O2. Um, lo mismo que um, el dióxido de carbono, ¿no? Tiene que ser CO2, no puede ser CO ni CO3, por ejemplo. Um, entonces, eh, para estar en equilibrio necesitamos ta también el desperdiciamiento que sea de buena calidad y que sea esté en equilibrio. To have this uh, dosha, dhatu, and mala in a good optimal function or to be in a healthy way, Ayurveda has understood that the three things should be in a good way: the diet, sleep, and exercise. So they call it as three pillars of life. So when these three pillars of our life is in good way, in a healthy way, our dhatu, mala, and like doshas will be functioning in a good way. Um, esto es cierto también uh, para todo, ¿no? Que al final si necesitamos una buena, si necesitamos un equilibrio necesi uh, en nuestro cuerpo, necesitamos comer bien, ¿no? Una buena dieta, dormir bien un buen sueño y ejercicio, ¿no? Las tres cosas que llevan a un a una vida saludable. Comer, dormir y ejercicio. Yeah. So here I will come and discuss about like we go to the next slide. Uh, talk about like what on a detailed discussion about diet. I will has given good importance for all these three pillars. So they have discussed in detail about like how to eat, when to eat, what to eat, what to eat. So all these things are discussed in Ayurveda. Um, Ayurveda explica exactamente qué comer, cómo comer, dónde comer, um, cuánto comer, todo está explicado. And Ayurveda also spoke similarly. They have uh, discussed about sleep. You can go to the next slides again. Lo mismo es cierto sleep, para like how, how to dormir sleep, like y how para ejercicio. Sleep, how to be, a, yeah, how to like attain a good sleep and also discussed about exercise like what to do how to do and what are things how much you should do all the things are discussed so you can have a healthy body with this equilibrium si todo está determinado para que tengamos un un cuerpo equilibrado no nos dice cómo comer cuánto comer dónde dormir cuánto dormir um, cuándo es, eh, deberíamos levantarnos cuánto no todo para que podamos tener una vida saludable So I read a focus on you know, wellness programs like to have you know, optimal function so you can have lesser stress or like we can say, like you can be very optimal in your you know, function on your, you know, what are things that you do, you can get more focus. So there are different kinds of wellness program in Ayurveda uh, so, and also different kinds of immunomodulator and rejuvenation program. So you get, you know, uh, a preventive care Sí, hay varios programas dentro de Ayurveda que nos explican cómo podemos cuidarnos para prevenir enfermedades ¿no? y para mantener ese equilibrio cuando, 
cuando no, nos, no lo sentimos, ¿no? Porque muchas de estas cosas, um, el sueño, la dieta, el ejercicio, los datos, lo, todo puede estar en desequilibrio, que es absolutamente normal. Entonces, lo que Ayurveda hace es pr eh, programas de prevención en vez de um, pro eh, solucionar problemas una vez que los tengamos. So you get good focus on your life, like the things you do, you feel more lighter, you feel more energetic. So for that, I really gives a good wellness program. Entonces, ahí tiene un programa muy bueno de bienestar para que podamos tener una vida más saludable, podamos, uh, podamos tener más, uh, podemos enfocar en cosas mejor, más concentración y podamos vivir nuestra vida de manera óptima, digamos. And then I really talk like this is about detox program. We have five de detox method. Uh, so like I really know like when you do a diff like when you're not in a rhythm with the climate, when you're not rhythm with your body, uh, like the like circadian rhythm, when you're not with that, there are different kinds of the toxin will not be in, eliminated from the body. So for that, you can give some kind of therapies so you get detox. Detox. Lo mismo Ayurveda también nos dice cuando el cuerpo no está um, en equilibrio, ¿no? ¿Cómo podemos llegar a ese equilibrio? ¿Cómo podemos detoxicar nuestro ser de cualquier, cualquier desequilibrio, ¿no? Llega, uh, para que podamos volver a ese equilibrio, ¿no? Hay formas de quitar un exceso de nuestro cuerpo, ¿no? Si tenemos un exceso de, en un datu, en un... Um, en un dosha, lo que sea, hay formas de eliminarlos o para que volver al equilibrio. And I will also have a good understanding about the importance of stress or role of stress in pathogenesis or as a cause of disease. When we learn about any disease in Ayurveda, they have discussed about different kinds of stress causing many, many kind of physical disorder. So Ayurveda is also giving distress program so you have less stress, like the physical stress or mental stress. Pues eh, lo mismo es verdad sobre el estrés mental, ¿no? Hay muchos programas, como dijo antes, de cómo hacer o cómo vivir nuestras vidas para tener menos estrés. Ok, you can go to the next slide. So here, actually, Ayurveda is focusing on when we are treating someone or when you are giving some advice for wellness or well-being, Ayurveda focus on this, this kind of different departments like, you know, your lifestyle, your diet and gut health, like your sleep, your biotic balance, like the microbiome you have, the, like the stress management, the rhythm of your, you know, of your life rhythm, uh, like, you know, the circadian rhythm and like to live according to the season. So I really focus on all these departments so, uh, so you have a good health. So that's why I really is called as a holistic medicine. So it's not, we are not just treating the physical body. We treat the whole, the, like, you know, the whole, whole body, including the body and mind. Por, um, entonces, cuando, cuando hablamos de Ayurveda, pues Ayurveda, como dijo, es muy amplia y, y abarca muchos temas, ¿no? Tanto estilo de vida, como el sueño, la dieta, estrés, el ritmo cardíaco, el ritmo, el ritmo de la vida, um, el equilibrio y por eso es lo que él dice que Ayurveda es una ciencia holística y, uh, y hablamos de, porque no solo tra trata el cuerpo, sino el cuerpo y la mente como una, entonces es mucho más holístico. So, for example, if, we, if somebody comes to us with any disease, we try to advise different lifestyle modification, we give a good diet plan, we make sure that they, they sleep properly and they have a good gut health and they have a good microbiome balance, there is no stress and he's following in a good rhythm and then we give the medication or else I would say is if these three things are, if these six departments, these factors, these six factors are not going proper way and if you're giving some medicine, uh, it's not going to work. Entonces, cuando alguien viene a tratarse, um, no, eh, no pueden darle simplemente medicina porque si no tienen estas seis cosas en ritmo, la medicina no funcionará, ¿no? No, no va simplemente a funcionar, tienes que tener un estilo de vida saludable, tienes que tener um, un equilibrio um, corporal, digamos, un, eh, una dieta saludable, 
estar sin estrés mientras que estás tomándote la medicación o el tratamiento, a dormir bien, a um, tener un, un ritmo de vida saludable. Cuando tengamos todo esto es cuando la medicina es, eh, funciona más óptimamente, digamos. So in com coming webinar series, we'll be discussing in detail about the lifestyle, like what Ayurveda says, what is the lifestyle modification that you should do, what are the things that you should be done for having a good uh, you know, gut health and good diet, and what are the things that should be done, you have a good microbial balance, what are the things that you, should, that you can be done to have less stress, and how to live with the rhythm in life. So in coming webinar series, we'll be discussing in detail about all these kind of things, Yeah, that's about Ayurveda and that's a fundamental sort of uh, like thing we talk about Ayurveda. Thank you for listening. Um, entonces, en lo siguiente. Ah, sí. En. En los siguientes um, webinars, pues le gustaría compartir más información sobre cómo, um, sobre el cómo de todo esto, ¿no? Porque actualmente os ha dado como un fundamento, os ha dado como los básicos, pero no os ha explicado el, uh, el qué y el cómo, ¿no? Uh, por ejemplo, cómo conseguir una dieta saludable o qué dieta deberías tomar o qué... Um, ¿Cuánto deberías dormir? ¿A qué hora deberías dormir? Todo esto me gustaría compartirlo con vosotros, pero um, en otro uh, webinar donde podam, puedas enfocar más en, en el tema y e igual en cada persona, ¿no? Porque al final somos pocos y la idea es que sea más individual, ¿no? Perfecto. Ah, y, y da las gracias por, por escucharle. Perfect. Um, si quieres empezamos con um, Dr. Akilesh Veria, que es la parte que nos va a explicar un poquito de las hierbas, las, las hierbas más importantes, digamos, um, que, que él ve um, y, y nos va a explicar un poquito cómo incorporarlas uh, en la, uh, para todos los doshas, ¿no? Porque es verdad que al final cada hierba es medicinal en Ayurveda, ¿no? Y al final depende de cada dosha, cada persona. Le gustaría explicaros más y se, supongo, supongo que doctor Akilesh, que también es de Kerala, nos va a dar una idea de qué hierbas podemos usar para nuestro cuerpo, nuestra mente um, y que nos puedan llegar a dar ese equilibrio que buscamos. Hi, doctor Akilesh. No. Sorry, I just introduced you and said that you were going to talk now about the herbs, herbology yeah. part. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, thank you, Fan, for a wonderful insight in Ayurveda. So shall we shall we move ahead or? Uh, do yeah, we... yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Should I uh, take out the questions, questions for ah. Irfan? Alguien tiene preguntas para para uh, para Doctor Irfan. <laughs> Sobre Ayurveda. No, I think. No question. We can't hear you. Sorry, Dr. Klesh, we can't hear you. It's you're in mute. Yes. Okay, I'm audible now. Yeah. As uh, Irfan had suggested or said, Ayurveda is a united world. It is made of Ayus and Veda. Um, Ayurveda es, igual que dijo Dr. Irfan, um, significa Ayu y Veda, que es um, una palabra unida. When we go deep and deep, Ayus has different meanings in Sanskrit. Um, si vamos, ups, perdón. Si... Si vamos eh, más en profundidad, pues Ayus tiene un significado distinto en sánscrit. I think you can stop sharing your screen. I'm trying to, but I do. Oh, yeah, stop sharing. Mm -hmm. There. Thank you. <laughs> The word Ayus in sánscrit coming from a root word called Ingatau Dhatu. Oh, that's hard. Um, uh, Ayus viene de un, una palabra sánscrita que dice Indatas Dhatu. In, in Gatau, which means one which goes or disappears. Ah, eso significa algo que viene, eh, que viene y se va. So, when we listen to the word Ayus or Ayurveda, the first and foremost thing, Ayurveda informs that we are dealing with a life which is limited. 
Entonces, Ayurveda, lo primero que te dice que es, la vida es limitada. And let me quote one of my teachers, uh, Vaidya Ramanovar, as what he said. Um, va a decir lo que dijo uno de sus profesores. The word ingatau has different meanings also. Que la palabra ingatau tiene distintos significados. Gati can be interpreted as movement. Gati puede, se puede entender como movimiento. Which means your life is not static and it is constantly moving. Que significa que tu vida no es estática y está constantemente moviéndose. It is moving towards its own death and that is a paradox of life. Que la vida se eh, está yendo hacia tu propia muerte y esa es la paradoxia de la vida. And this movement is extremely dynamic. Y este movimiento es extremadamente dinámico. So the life is continuously adapting itself to survive. Entonces la vida está constantemente adaptándose para sobrevivir. Because it is moving towards the inevitable death. Porque se está moviendo hacia la muerte inevitable. So the entire focus of life Entonces el, el enfoque de la vida should be in self-preservation es, es en, en la, otro, la autopreservación. And that is one of the meaning of Ayus again. Y esa es una de los significados de Ayu. When we understand the word Veda, which comes along with Ayu, cuando entendemos la palabra Veda que viene detrás de Ayu, we translate as knowledge. Lo podemos traducir como conocimiento. It comes from the root word called Vit. Eh, 